Hi, Jacob from Turtle. Today we will take a look at how we could build an accordion component in Turtle. Um, so I have my demo app set up here. Let me just show it. Here we go. I've already set up a little bit of the uh, styling. I've went with a a nice purple color here. So the idea of accordion is that you have a header that is always shown, and you have some content that you show when you click. Right now, I've not set any logic up. This is just uh, the styling. Um, then there's one additional uh, important part to accordion that is usually when you click one accordion, any other accordion in the same kind of group will uh, will close themselves. Um, and if we were to use attributes and events to to do this, uh, we would have to manually have to set these things up every time. We add an accordion and handle it in some parent. We have to do this manually each time. But with uh, context, we can take all this logic about uh, state and, uh, and move it to a separate component. And then these two components can automatically talk with each other. So I'm going to show how, to, uh, how we can do this. Um, <laughs> so let's leave this one for now. We have a UI component. It doesn't really do anything, but let's create uh, another component. And this component will be a kind of a handler or a, a wrapper, a container that contains the state of which accordion is open and it can inform the accordion of which ones to show themselves. Um, so let's do that. We have our UI accordion. Let's add another one. Let's call it UI accordions. So with an S, we can also call it accordion container, uh, something like that. But this gives the idea that there's multiple. Um, this one doesn't really render anything by itself, but it can render any accordions we put into it. So let's add a slot. So slot in total is a uh, kind of a placeholder for other content. So if you use this component, anything you put inside of it would uh, render in here. So let's start with that. <laughs> and then we need um, some state somewhere to, to indicate what accordion. So I think in this case, we're just going to let one accordion be open. That's a uh, yeah, maximum one. So let's call it key. So each accordion will have a key. And whichever key is shown will be, will be shown. And let's set the default value to null. I think we can just delete this one and we get a, a null. That's like the default value if you don't have something in a, in a formula. Then we also need um, a way to tell the children which accordion is open. And normally you would do this with attribute, but since we don't really know what's going to go in here, um, we have another uh, tool we can use, and that is the, uh, the context, the context feature. So context here, this is the context you want to use in the component. But if you want to expose something to children, you will set the context in a formula or a workflow. So let's do a, um, let's do a, a formula here. I think the value is just going to be our key. That's what we want to expose. And let's just call it, uh, we can actually just call it key, I think. Uh, that's, that's fine. We can call it the same thing. And the important part is we click this button, expose in context. Okay, we have this. Let's do a workflow as well. So workflow is the other way. That is if the children wants to communicate with the parent. So let's call it set key. <laughs> and all it does is uh, set the key to what we send in here. Okay. So now we can update it. Uh, we also have to expose this one. And now we can actually use it in our accordion here. Let's go back to our accordion. And let's uh, subscribe to this context. So we just click the little button here. Say use context. Uh, it already suggests this one because it's the only one. But otherwise, if you had more than one, you could uh, select them here. We want to use both. We want to be able to see it, and we want to be able to set it. Um, so for the key, what key should we use? We could manually send it in with an attribute, but then we would again manually have to set this up for each one. That could be a use case. Maybe you want to group some uh, things. But I think in our use case, I want to keep this super simple. So you just kind of plug and play this thing without having to set anything up. So let's set up a few attributes for this one, uh, whatever we need. Oh, sorry, not attributes. Let's set up... Uh, a variable actually, because the variable has this initial value, so we can use that to generate ourselves a key. So let's call this, uh, uh, we can just call it key again. It's going to be a bit confusing with all these things called key, but I think it each of them has an icon, so we kind of know what, what they are. The key, uh, it can just be anything, but let's make sure it's unique. So let's just go with a random number. It's um, normally you might want to use a string value here, but it, it's just going to be converted. So uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, the chance of two keys colliding is, uh, is is very very small here, so <laughs> this is gonna be fine. Um, so when this one is um, clicked, 
so uh, when we click this one, we want to update the key for the parent, um, for the accordions thing. So let's do that now. When we click this header, we want to call a workflow. So we have this UI accordion set key. That's because we subscribe to this workflow. So now we get it here. So we can just call it. And oh, I forgot to um, I forgot to send a. Uh, how did I do this? Okay, I made a one mistake. Uh, we need to add an input here. So let's call this new key. And the test value can just be ABC. So something we can see. And in here, I set the the value to the formula. That's that's very wrong. This has to be the input. So when we call this workflow, we can then um, we can then specify what the key is. Um, so that's important. Go back to accordance. We were doing the click event here. So it's still the same one, set key, but now we have this new key. So we can set the value we want it to be at. And we want it to be the same value as this accordion. So you have multiple ver uh, multiple of these accordions. They will each call this one with their unique key and update. And that means that this uh, formula, so if we had, uh, let's go down here. This is the content. We say we only want to show this content if the key that we get from the UI accordion, so the parent, that's the one that decides if that matches this key, then we want to show it. Otherwise, uh, it's some other accordion that is shown. Or none. It can also be no, none of them are shown. <coughs> so let's say uh, this one equals to our own key. So if the the one that holds the active key, the one that is being shown, if that is equal to this own one's key, then we show it otherwise not. Um, <laughs> let's see. I think we are almost there. Let's actually try this out and see if there's any issues. Sometimes if I get something. Uh, let's remove uh, this and this. Let's just actually remove all of it. And then we can add our accordions. And let's add our accordion. So now we have one. It's just called empty. Um, it has no title, but we can fix that later. And let's add another one. And I think that do not have any content, do they? Accordion. They do actually. So slots in total. If you put content inside of a slot inside a component here, this will be the default value. So if you haven't specified anything else, this will be the value that you use. So let's try it out uh, to our homepage. I'll just go in test mode. I'll press T. And if I click this one, we can see now we see the content. And if I click the other one, then this one should hide and this one should show. Aha, it works. It works. There's no way to like close them again if you want to do that. But you could just set up an, an, a null key if it's already selected. Uh, and again, if you want to add content, you can just add, uh, let's see, um, do we have a good snippet? A card maybe? What about table? So it will automatically go uh, to one of the slots. You can add it to the header or the default. Let's just do the uh, default value here. And we can do the same with, with this one. And then if we test this, you can see that now we actually have some, some data inside in these accordions. They may be not the prettiest accordions in the world, but uh, you get the idea. Um, and then we can do something quite interesting as well. So if we, just to show kind of how these accordions work or how this context work, the way they work is that uh, when this subscribes to a context, it will take that context, the nearest one, which is this one, and, and use that. But that also means you can actually go any level down. There could have been 100 diffs between here or many other components components inside component, but whenever this one subscribes, it will look all the way up the tree until it finds um, this UI accordion component. That means we put one of these ones inside this one. So now we have an accordion inside an accordion. We're gonna see something a bit weird. So this one, first one works, but the second one, it works, but if I click this one, then all of a sudden it closes. And that's because this one is showing, which says this one is not showing, but since it's inside, it's still not showing. So it, it's uh, that's a bit of a weird thing. But So what if I, did want to have maybe some accordion inside of this accordion. Um, in that case, let's uh, remove this one. In that case, you have to have um, one more of these containers. So let's copy this one, put it inside here. And let's test again. This one has nothing. This one has now two accordions. But if I click these ones, they do work. And they are kind of grouped together because they will look at the nearest UI accordions. And since there's one down here, then this one will keep track of the state of these ones. Um, so that's um, 
that's one of the cool use cases you can do with the uh, with context. You can see these components, they don't take any attributes. They are completely self-dependent. It takes some slots, you can change the content, or you could add attributes as well. I think if we wanted to, we could, um, I think we could make an attribute called header text. If you don't want to use a slot, you can just say, hello world, it's a test value. Uh, and then this is the default value. It says empty, but let's change this to uh, header. Just call it hello world. It was already there. So now you can, you know, you can use a combination between context, uh, context and, and and attributes because context is great for certain things like this, and you could technically use context to to, to send attributes down to an element or events back up. But attributes and events are still great for uh, for managing uh, communication in most cases. Context is usually better for for these kind of cases because one of the issues we see now is that this accordion is now dependent on this UI accordion. If, if there's none of these one above, then uh, this will not work. So we can try to put one in the uh, in the top here. So now we have one there. If I test this one, it will not actually work. It cannot open because it's not really handling its own state. You could make a condition so you keep track of its own state and the parent or the accordion state and then if it's not there, you could try to handle it. So it, it works even more independently as well. Uh, but the power of this one is really that um, the power is that these ones are now, uh, you don't, as a user who come in, if you were joining a team and they have these uh, components, you don't need to know anything about these uh, attributes. If you use these one, you don't have to like manually keep track of uh, which one is uh, active and so now all of this uh, logic around state is handled by the components themselves. Um, so this is one fun use case for um, for uh, UI components, and, and there's many other ones. We use them for feature flags inside Turtle, and we use them for even global state. They can work fairly well for. So if you put this one uh, in the root of your uh, on the, the page level, then you can actually uh, use this data anywhere in your app. So if you have some kind of uh, API data, for example, you have a component put up that fetches some user information, you can expose that to all the children in the entire app and they can subscribe to it. And whenever it changes, it will, they will all update. Um, so this is one use case, there's many others, uh, and we can't wait to see what uh, um, what you all come up with. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be fun to see. All right, that's it for, for context for now. We have a few more videos coming up, but uh, Hopefully uh, this will get you started. All right.